What's up? It's George the Fragrance Apprentice here. We're just creating the new Fragrance Apprentice set. So I've always wanted to do a video about fragrances that don't get me any compliments whatsoever, but I still wear them because I really enjoy them. Wearing fragrances just for compliments and just for other people to like you is not healthy. It's not healthy behavior. It's not good. It's fun to get compliments and to get attention, of course, but when you're reliant on some smelly liquid to do the work that you're going to have to do in social situations, that's not healthy. Just want to point that out. So here are seven fragrances that don't get me compliments at all. So the number seven fragrance on this list is sort of a take it or leave it, but the number one in here is the fragrance that people really just don't like at all, but I just love and I just absolutely love wearing it. So let's go for it. Number seven is Coca Rico by Jean Paul Gaultier. I um I bought this to do a video on how it's one of probably the biggest failures in FragCom and it's actually kind of fascinating as somebody who really enjoys the history of the fragrance industry and marketing and all that kind of stuff, which I am. Cocorico was the rightful heir to the Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance empire. Of course, they'd had La Mal, and La Mal was the biggest fragrance in the world at one point. And they relied upon, you know, all the flankers like Ultramal, which which gained some popularity. Uh, they've tried their luck with La Mal Aviator and all that kind of stuff. But but you know, quite a number of years ago, ten years ago nearly, they decided to try their luck with uh, Cocorico, which was a completely brand new. Uh, line for them. Anyway, they released this and it was a complete flop and as I said I, I was gonna buy it and, and do a little sort of mini documentary on it. So I started kind of wearing it uh, ironically, you know what I mean? I started wearing it because of, <laughs> you know, Coco Rico for crying out loud. I was wearing it and not really taking it that seriously, but I, I have started to enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, it is, it's kind of a mess. This was an attempt to smell like Lundstant de Guerlain or Extrem. Many fragrances were trying to smell like Lone Stunt de Guerlano Extreme because it was a very, very popular fragrance at the time and it failed pretty miserably. And so what you've got when you have the opening is it smells like soil. It smells like soil and a little bit of coffee with some tonka bean and some patchouli as well. And it, it's a bit wild and it's a bit messy, but I have grown to like it. I have grown to enjoy it. It's very, very weird. It's a very, very strange fragrance. It's, yeah, uh, like, literally just, I don't really want to spray it, but that's chocolate and soil and patchouli. What, what, what's happening? But I kind of enjoy it and, uh, yeah, have started liking wearing it. So, yeah, that's Coca Rico. Number six is Parfums de Mali Herod. Um, yeah, so this actually, to me, smells a bit like Nutella has a kind of a hazelnut thing, but I also detect the swathes of black pepper and cinnamon that's in here. And I do like it, and it's frighteningly long-lasting, and the sillage is huge, and, and that's the whole gig with Parfums de Mali. They are not known for making natural fragrances, and their fragrances to me don't smell natural at all. In fact, they smell incredibly synthetic. But that's their gig, and that's what their fan base wants. They want fragrances that smell very, very loud and have incredible sillage and performance and all that sort of thing. Herod doesn't really get me any compliments, it's never really got me anything really, attention-wise. But Alicia doesn't like this. Many of the women that I know, they aren't bothered, they're not really interested. The compliment factor here is is not really very big and, and I can understand why, because it's it is a bit messy, it's a little bit sort of overbearing, it's a little bit much. And you're just being hit with black pepper and vanilla and tobacco and cinnamon and, and you know that can work sometimes in fragrances but not with this one with the majority of people but I enjoy it I really like wearing it. it like I said it reminds me of Nutella I think that that's quite fun it's the only parfums de Mali I own um, I've never really personally wanted to I've never been drawn to any of the other parfums to Molly's. I think they all smell very synthetic and quite trashy. I think that Carlisle smells quite synthetic and trashy. Uh, Leighton, uh, Percival, uh, Pegasus, uh, they're not they're not really my thing and they are designed for a specific purpose which is to just smell obnoxiously loud. Apart from Herod, the only other 
fragrance from Parfums de Mali where I've thought to myself, oh, actually, I, I, I might have a bottle of that is Galloway. Number five is Behique. And man, I mean, this is this is incredibly difficult to wear. And I just, I'm nervous whenever I, I try to put it on. I really love this, by the way. Really, really do enjoy it. Love it so, so much, but it, it smells of soil and, and herbs and spices. That's literally it. It's, it's wet, beautifully wet soil with spices and herbs. And I do like this fragrance for a number of reasons. I think that it's incredibly mature and just very, very bold. The bottle color is dark green. That's perfect. That's a perfect color for what this fragrance is because this fragrance really smells like dark green. There's cannabis in here. I don't really get, I don't smell when, I, when I'm wearing this like I've smoked a joint or something like that. But I do get something that is 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 herbal and, and, and green and, and that goes along with the spiciness. But damn, you know, earthy, wet, green soil. I love it, really adore it, but nobody else is really gonna uh, enjoy it and uh, nobody else has really liked this on me, which is such a shame, but I still wear it, whatever. Another reason why I like this fragrance is I just have good memories of, I don't know if you've seen it, it's actually one of the lowest viewed videos on my channel. I think it's because it was age restricted. We did a, a fragrance review of this in a abandoned Catholic university and we shot it like it was a horror movie and it was sick and, and it was me trying to basically showcase visually what this reminded me of and it, it does remind me of like a big giant building that's been left to be abandoned and then the greenery and nature has started to clamor and, and take it over and if you're interested it, or at all intrigued by the sound of this fragrance, I, I'd recommend you watch that video. Number four is this. This is Danger by Roger, Roger Dove. And man, I mean, it's wonderful. I, I really do love it, but it does smell like a, an old man. It really does. And I kind of like that a lot. Um, I like smelling, you know, older and wiser and mature. And I mean, look, I, I dress like this and, and this, uh, this fragrance totally suits the thing that I'm wearing right now very woody very very woody and has a sort of a there's a cleanliness with it with the woods but it's, it's very classic very very classic and very very well made and very very naturally smelling incredible ingredients that have been used I just want to say a little point here I really think that Roja Dove it, it, they're, they're coming for that Creed market they're coming for that Amouage market and although this doesn't get me compliments at all, Enigma does. Enigma gets me a good amount of attention. You know, in the end, like the footballers and the celebrities, they're gonna they're gonna go away from Creed because Creed. I think that Creed's days are kind of numbered in in some ways because of some of the things that they do. I'm gonna be making a video about that topic about how I think that Creed are. You know, they're kind of jumping the shark and they've only got really themselves to blame. And so what's the heir to that kind of niche throne? And it's Roja. Roja are really putting in the effort at the moment. They really are. And um, I think that they are going to be the, the number one kind of talked about and sought after niche brands in a very, very short period of time. Number three, Musk Ravageur by Frederick Mal. I mean, you can tell I've been in this fragrance community for such a long time. If I, if I see anybody talking about Musk Ravageur, I know that they have been watching fragrance YouTube videos for 10 years, right, or over 10 years. Because back in 2009 to 2013, this was like CH Men or La Nuit de L'Homme is now. It was hyped to death, in incredibly. But then people smelt it and they bought it and it's very medicinal. It's got like a clove and orange vibe. And the guy who hyped it, a guy called Hero, um, who I think his YouTube channel got deleted or something, but he was like the Jeremy of that era. He was like, man, this is like sex in a bottle and this is amazing. And da, da, da. But, it, but it isn't really. In fact, it's a, it, it, there's something about it that's not very palatable to the nose. And, and most women that I've ever worn this round, they've not, they've not even noticed it. And it's not because of reformulation. This is an older bottle. It, it never really got any sort of attention from me or uh, like on a, especially like on a sexual basis or on an attractive kind of basis. Nobody was you know, clawing at me to take my clothes off when I wore this fragrance. I mean, it, it is sensual, but it's not sexy. This is kind of like poetically sensual and it's thoughtful and, and, and lovely, but it's 
it's I can't say it's sexy. Linoid de Lom is sexy. I'm not even the biggest fan of Linoid de Lom, but that's a sexy fragrance. Dior Homme is a sexy fragrance. This is a, I don't know really, but it's certainly not sexy. Number two, I really just wear this all the time and I really don't care. I don't care if people like this on me or not, I'm gonna wear it. This is City on Fire. Oh my God, I just love it. I mean, when you spray it, it smells as though you've just like thrown barbecue fuel all over yourself. And that's a little bit much. But then after that, man, like the dry down, I think is really quite sexy and really quite attractive because it's like that fiery embers kind of smell, but there's also this really nice woody, sweet muskiness to it that's really strong and really potent and a little bit animalistic and which of course goes along with the fire thing and that really is good really really good you can see that i've worn a lot of it and i wore this like a lot in the summer evenings I really really got a lot out of it because summer evenings i was going out and i was kind of like you're not exactly sweaty but you're warm you know your body temperature is risen and, and this really works with that, and that's the kind of the weird thing with a fragrance that's as deep and as strong as this, you'd think that, okay, well, you've got to wear this in the cold weather, you've got to wear this in the, the freezing cold weather. But I don't know, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't really suit dry, cold skin for me. It actually suits more warm skin, but it's nighttime. I really love this one, really, truly um, feel very, very deeply and, and passionate about this one. I've shown it to a few people that are like, George, you just smell like a barbecue, you smell as though you're a match on fire. And I'm like, well, there's kind of a clue in the title, but I don't care, I really just, I wear this one for me. Just 100% wear this one for me. And finally, my number one, I mean, this one even for me is is kind of difficult even for me to wear. This is Nesnaz Quarine by Parfume Prisoner. This is this is Prin uh, Lomros, who of course, I, I love a lot of his work. I love Salted Green Mango and in particular SM Cafe at the moment. This feels like a early prototype of SM Cafe. SM Cafe, in terms of wearability and mainstream appeal, and not just that, but on a technical basis, is head and shoulders above this fragrance, no doubt. But I still get a kick out of this. This is smoke, like hardcore smoke, interlaced with coffee. That's nuts. It's crazy. And then some amber, like some hard, sandy, amber like the the really the the least wearable type of amber just throw it into a pot mix it up and then spray it on yourself that's what this fragrance is i've got a lot out of wearing this because i feel as though i'm i'm wearing something that's like challenging me and making me think and you know i'll be wearing it thinking of like mm, what kind of a review could i do and all that kind of stuff when you really get like when, when there's no hope for you when you when you sell into fragrance and perfume that there's there's literally just no hope and you know, you just, just adore it and love it and you love all the artistic and creative elements to it. That's where I am and, and that's why I wear this and, and love it. But I mean, man, could I recommend this to anybody as a reviewer? I don't know, just like really sad nerds such as myself who've got perfume YouTube channels. Sure, if you're one of those guys, then sure, this would be fantastic. It really is a truly niche fragrance. But if you're just like, yo, George, what can I wear? And what can I wear, to wear out? You'd never see me uh, recommend this fragrance because it's just so darn difficult to wear. Yeah, smoke, harsh, sandy amber, and roasted coffee beans. That is what this is. Really love it and really enjoy it, but it doesn't get any compliments. It gets nothing. It gets complaints, but I really love it. So those were some fragrances that I wear just simply for myself. I enjoy wearing fragrances that people enjoy and I think that fragrance can be a very sociable thing. But when you have so many fragrances and so many options, sometimes you just want to wear stuff that you want to wear for yourself. Anyway, hope that you got something out of this and hell, if some of these fragrances sounded interesting, then, you know, test them out, see what you think. What fragrances do you wear for yourself that you know they're not gonna get any compliments not really gonna get maybe any attention at all, but you still wear them because you love them. Would love to hear from you in the comments. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time I upload. Anyway, I'm the Fragrance Prayers. Thanks so much, bye.